Arun? Eight. eight, yeah. Okay, that is good. Reptiles. Okay. Birds. All right. And mammals. Very nice. Okay. So that is what we saw yesterday that this, this phylum, uh, called data, or the codets have been belong to five classes uh, that are uh, the pieces, the fish, the class, uh, Reptaria, class, Amphibia, uh, class, uh, Mammalia. And the, for yesterday, we looked at a class. Uh, fish or the pieces, and the, what we looked talked about them uh, was that the, one uh, we say they live in water and they have bodies covered with scales for protection talked about the ability to live in water and the stability and that they get from the fins that are sometimes used for movement. And we saw how they are ectotherm. And we also saw that fish use gills for gas exchange. We ended it by saying that they are food to many organisms. This is what we last, last, we last talked about, although we had done some activity uh, before this. Now, today, uh, we want to look at the class amphibia. Uh, we want to look at class amphibia. Uh, I you, hope you're able to see that. Um, okay. Now, this class has examples and uh, I was trying to share with you some examples uh of these organisms that belong to phyla amphibia if we need to know the examples our biology that we are looking at requires us to identify these uh, these uh, classes or the groupings for these organisms with the, some examples and then characteristics okay that is the much we are required to know okay now I have shared a screen uh, with some examples. Can someone try to take us through uh, examples of organisms that belong to this class, amphibia? Yes. Hello. Yes, Jonah. Jonah, you can go ahead. Class amphibians. Mm -hmm. Examples: frog, toad, salamander. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, let me share the screen I wanted. This is actually what I wanted eh? I want us to first make it, this one has more examples that we want to look at. Okay, can we, uh, Jonah, can you again take us through the example that we have displayed here? This one here. Um. <clears throat> Uh, 
A fiuma. A fiuma. Toad. Okay. Monkey frog. Bell, belly toad. That frog. Frog. Tree frog. Moist frog. Flying frog. Newt. Okay, yeah, uh, okay, that is good. Uh, so particularly, uh, what we see here in examples are frogs, newets, toads, and then sal salamanders, okay? Uh, these are the common uh, examples of, uh, uh, common examples of, uh, these are the common examples of amphibians. Okay, uh, some of them are common to us, like uh, when, when we shared about the tree frogs, I think in one way we have seen them in, the, in our communities, we have seen them and they're very common in our communities. Uh, then Okay, these are the examples. So from the, uh, the examples shared, uh, uh, you can see this one is a, uh, this, 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 uh, the frog and then with the salamander. Salamander uh, looks like a reptile. Uh, only that for it has a blunt front, yeah? It's knows the mouth is blunt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a little blunt, as we can see there. And then uh, if we go back to, to the work here, uh, now, with those three examples, uh, I think the salamander, many, many people can have been taking them to be, to be, you may think they are reptiles, but the difference is the, with, the, with these other lizard like because they look like lizards. However, for them, their mouth, this not, snout, you know what we call a snout? The front part, the mouth, eh? is not pointed like that one of the uh, of the lizards. Eh? The lizards are reptiles, eh? but these ones are amphibian. For them, they have a blunt, uh, uh, a blunt snout. Do you understand wh what we mean by blunt snout? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Uh, hope, yeah, yeah, I hope you have been able to see that in the in the example that I was uh, sharing, this one, eh? This snout here is blunt, it's not pointed, eh? The front part of this salamander here in the picture is not pointed. It is, uh, uh, it's not as pointed as we see it. After it would resemble the front of this uh, kind of uh, uh, frog that we are, we are sharing here. Yeah, you can see that characteristic kind of snout, which is different from the one for lizards, okay, or other reptiles. Reptiles normally they normally have a pointed snout, like you see it in the lizards, which I'm sharing here. We shall talk about the reptiles in the one in our next uh, slides. Eh? We shall be talking about them, but he, I wanted to be specific on these salamanders, okay? Uh, they, how, why, how we can differentiate them from the, the, the what? From the reptiles, wherever we see, wherever we see them, yeah? Wherever we see them, yeah? We, there are quite many examples of them. Uh, and how there is this one, normally people kill it mostly. Uh, it is a, also an amphibian. It looks like a, a real reptile or a snake, but it's an amphibian. And the one thing, it has no big problem. 
you would think it is a snake, but it is, a, it is an amphibian for that case. There are quite many, uh, many examples we, we can talk, we can have a look at for that reason. Okay. Okay, now that we are familiar with the examples of amphibians, the common two have been frogs and then toads. They have been very common to, to, to us. Even the frogs, the previous slide I, I, I shared uh, was showing us how the frogs are themselves very, very different. Yeah? Uh, it was showing how they are very different. If I can get back to that slide again, it was showing us how they are uh, very different. It was giving us three frogs, uh, that frogs, and the uh, and the light. Yeah, all that was showing us how these amphibians could be. Yeah, we have it here, frog. The, the tadpole is the young one. We have the salamander, we have the new sea, tree frogs, wood frogs, bull frogs. So there are quite many, okay? So they are frogs, but they are, they are different, yeah? They are different in the uh, appearance. Uh, there is actually this one, the cesarean. I was able to see this one if I was telling about, how do you call this one local, your local language? Can someone that's have you seen this one before? It's snake like yes. amphibian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, it look, yeah, yeah, it would look as if it has two heads, eh? Uh, it looks as if it, it has those two, the two the, the actually the the two ends look similar. In the, in the shape. Damp places. That is the fourth common group of, as in times types of examples of amphibian. We take the frog, the salamanders, the toad, uh, the new weights, uh, the new weights, and then now the cesarean. Okay, uh, the cesareans. Even in Uganda, I think they. They exist in our country. Some of you have seen them before. Okay, those are the examples we can talk about. Uh, now, let's look at the literature about uh, the frogs. I don't know what you, whether, whether you have written this work. It has, let's start someone take us through what I have shared anyway. Yes, please. Joram, can you take us through? Joram. Yes, teacher. Yeah, can you take us through? Start starting from for the first part of the life. Eh? Uh, from what depending on what I've shared there. Eh? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yes. For the, for, the, for the first part of life, the, the life of amphibians, they live in water and use gills for gas exchange. When they become adults, they develop lungs and are able to live on land and return to water to mate and lay eggs. They are also able to exchange gases through they are soft, soft, moist skins. There are no scales on the skins. Amphibians are ectotherms. An ectotherm is an organism whose body, whose body temperature changes with the temperature of the external environment. Okay, thank you very much uh, about uh, taking us through that very well. Now, we need to understand uh, the life of amphibians. Uh, science tells us that uh, 
all life began in water. So the first organisms to live were found in water. Then occasionally, certain organisms started moving away from water to come and the first group of organisms to come on land. Now, coming out of water to live on land uh, has its challenges. One, I told you how it is very hot on land. And to come on land, you must have developed structures that can enable you to resist uh, water loss. Now, when amphibians attempted to come on land, they realized that one, they had no, they had no uh, body features that could enable them to live freely on land. That's why even when they come on land, they have maintained moist places and they have decided to come out of, uh, come out always when temperatures are down. That's why you see them mostly at night when temperatures are, are cool because they cannot come out of uh, during the day. That one would destroy all of them to extinction. So they need one to survive because they did develop structures to enable them to uh, survive on land where it is very hot. And if they come out during the day, they would, they would lose they much water and they would, they would lose much water and, and definitely they would die. Okay. Now, uh, this is the reason why we see them uh, in most places. Then too, they did not develop a, sh a shell around their eggs. So their eggs, they lay eggs which are not protected. Now, if you lay eggs which are not protected on land, it means all your offsprings will die. This is why these frogs, all these amphibians, even if they live on land, they still go back to water. That's why we say they go back to water to breed. That's why they can lay their eggs which are not protected by a shell. If you look at amphibians, for them, their eggs have a shell. Birds lay eggs which have a shell. That is the form of protection, okay? So for since the amphibians lack a shell around their eggs, they have to take them back to water where they can hatch and produce the younger ones, which we call the tadpoles. That's why we say that the tadpoles spend half, I mean, the first life. In the water and until that can enable them to survive on land. Those are the land for the for the tadpole. Hear me. Hello. Hello. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, since I'm uh, electric contraction, I uh, hope that doesn't occur again. It's a phone call. You have to stop. Okay. Now, so I, I was telling you how they start their early life in water. Okay. With when they have gills for survival. Of course, in water, you have to survive on gills. So they have external gills, which are during some stage of development, they lose them and develop their lungs. And by the time they develop lungs, that is when they come on, uh, that's when they come and they start living on land. And by the time they live on land, they have gills, and, I mean lungs, okay? I've told you that to come on land, you must have structures to use on land. On land, you, you must have lungs for gas exchange. So amphibians were able to, to get to that. They can develop lungs, so they moved on land. But the, the other, I've already explained to you why they cannot survive completely on land. So they have to double, live on land, and then go back to water where they can mate and then lay eggs. Another reason is that the, because their fertilization is external, 
they exhibit external fertilization remains, uh, they would need a medium to move the gametes, okay? When the male shed sperms, they have, must have a way of moving to reach the eggs. So that's why they go back to water. Actually, I've had them when coming during the rainy season, when the, they start calling each other, the male and the female start calling, yeah? In the night, so I had them calling. When they call each other, they gather around a, a water body, yeah, to go and start mating. And in, that is another behavior which they do. They keep on calling, okay? After the, the, the female will, will, will call, then the male will respond, and you have heard that music, eh? Yeah, that is about uh, part of their, even part of their courtship, eh? The female will normally actually listen which male has the, the most deepest voice, eh? Then the female will know, I think this one is very good, eh? So they would always reach for that male whose voice would say, oh, oh. but now if you, if, if, if the, the female calls it, and then the male responds the same, and the female say, which kind of male is this one that is coming to fertilize my eggs? <laughs> it would not accept such. So you'd look for a male whose voice is really for a male. Yeah, even in humans, you cannot have a male whose voice is, is like that one of the lady, supposing that thieves come. <laughs> to attack her home. Then he said, Mommy, Mommy, never be about us. The thieves are there. Now, <laughs> if they, the thieves will only run away if they hear, Mommy. But now he says, Mommy, who's that college man? In that such a situation, the thieves will just continue to be coming and packing everything, including the carpet, and they even sweep the room. Because they know it, it's it, <laughs> okay. So uh, th that is the, about to uh, uh, to courtship in these organisms. So the voice, they, those calls they make are very important for their mating and then the selecting which male. Yes, Mark. Yes, Mark. Teacher, is the cesarean poisonous? Um, now we, 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 one, we don't know about these uh, amphibians being poisonous. Or, uh, so it is known to actually, uh, or I would say, maybe I need to uh, cut out more research about it. I'm not so sure uh, whether they, they but uh, uh, what I know it is not poisonous and it rarely does it give even bites. We don't know this about amphibians, okay? Uh, we don't know of an amphibian which is poisonous. Uh, I, 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 I may have to do uh, more research about them, okay? Uh, if they could be poisonous. Even in our local areas, we are told they are unknown and they are, when you see them, we don't, they have no harm, yeah? we normally just push them, what? Uh, we normally just push them away. We don't do like killing them the way you would hand a snake, yeah? The way you would hand a snake. Someone has talked about the cesarean. Maybe I would share it and the people are able to uh, to see it. Uh, I don't know, uh, people will be able to see it. Some people may not have, I've seen it. Uh, the what part is talking about is this one here. The cesarean is asking if it is uh, poisonous. But uh, in our community, we have been seeing them. I've not heard of them being poisonous. If they are, I really have to find out more. But I think they are not. We don't know of one thing, okay? Uh, given. Yeah, the way maybe they feed, they don't need to have poison. But uh, uh, what uh, I know about amphibians like the frog is that uh, it, uh, that uh, smell, that uh, the bad smell which they can produce, 
okay and which is still poisonous those that are going to eat it okay even if a flow can produce a poisonous uh, substance one which smells bad and can keep away the predators but itself uh, if the predator continues to eat it then it will die because of that poisonous substance so i don't know if that's if the same can happen with this i need have i really need to to find out uh, about it if it is true that they are poisonous i think that would be my say, our homework for now to find out okay if they can be poisonous or or not yeah that one we shall get to know okay we shall get to know and maybe by tomorrow we shall have a, a better answer to understand yes uh powering 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 frame okay please uh, unmute if you want to ask the question yes powering like okay. we can't hear you is it angela for him? Corin? okay uh we have lost her uh, uh we have lost her or she Oh, she what? She she intended not to speak. Excuse me, teacher. Yes. I'm asking a question. Eh? Like yeah, when, please. what if they go to the sunshine? Will they eventually die, or they they protect themselves from sunshine? Now, that would be very dangerous to them because they are, they lack scales on their body meaning that they would dry out, they would lose much water and eventually they would die. That would cause their death completely. So if they did that, if they decided to come out during the day, eh? if they decided to strike, eh? for example, they stage a strike and they say today we are coming out during the day, and you, you, you just now forget about them, don't mind, eh? you just say, okay, you come, come out. You know, because you are very much aware they had they lack structures for protecting themselves against water loss. So if they did that, yes, maybe they want to end their lives and you will forget about maybe their existence. So it's not possible. They would die definitely if, if they did so. Okay, because would they manage uh, uh, the high temperatures of their body? Because remember they are ectothermic. Teacher. So the yes, please. Teacher. Yes, please. Yes, please. Teacher, why is yes, it please. that when you try to attack a, a frog, it mm. when you try to attack a frog, it grows mm. fat and then it blows. If you try to attack a frog, why yeah. is it that it tends to become fat yet it it was small yeah now like uh, any organism why uh, does it do that now I'm, I'm now trying to answer to you like any other organism okay uh, each organism must have ways of defending itself okay just it the nature of which looks alone can make a predator or an enemy run away so by trying to analyze it would be a defensive mechanism okay that uh, you have seen how turkeys behave when you approach them huh? have you seen turkeys how they behave turkey, yes you know, yes so that kind of bulking out eh? one is for pride and also trying to tell someone i'm around and i'm watching you get so it is a defense mechanism that they can use to scare away some enemies. So there are certain enemies that are so, uh, I don't know, we call them cowards, eh? That even if you you, you swear, they say, okay, this is 
that would be enough to chase them away. So it is a defense mechanism to avoid being attacked and being eaten, whatever. But in case you, you still don't run away, they will go ahead to produce the, uh, a, a, a substance, a white substance over themselves, okay? Which smells bad. That is another second defensive mechanism. But that substance itself is poisonous. Now, if you go ahead and maybe eat it, yeah, that poison now will kill, will just keep kill the, 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 the organs that wants maybe to attack or to do whatever. That's a third defense mechanism. So every organism has ways of surviving in its environment, okay? By defending itself, okay. But there are those that will even if you you borrow and become bigger than anyway, with them, they say so what we shall get you, okay. So, excuse uh, me, teacher. So that's about yes, please. I'm asking a question about the Sicilian. I've ever yeah. seen it in the road, but it seems like it has two heads. Is it true that it has two heads? Because we we hit the first head, then it started moving using the other head. Yeah, it has the uh, actually. It looks like it has two heads, and and it, it can move in any direction. I have seen also the same with it. Yeah, it can move in both direction using any. So if you disturb it this way, it will move uh, backwards using the other way. It could be some mechanism. It maybe it uses to easily survive in, well, in its habitat, you know, wherever it stays, that would be a mechanism which you need to understand very much, yeah? I'd not really done so much research about these sayings very much, but uh, if you look at, if you look at them, you would agree with me, uh, they look to have, uh, uh both sides like the head so, so i've seen them also can move this way and then move backwards the other way around okay it can that one can happen with them so yeah maybe it could be for some kind of defense okay that they can this one this other last part which would be like the tail can still be used to move backwards just in case that, that's what happens to them. Maybe it is a for some form of survival. Okay. All right. That is all we can say about the class amphibia. Uh, I would love if we move on to class reptilia. And here, we are having class lepteria like before. Uh, we want to look at some examples. We want to look at some uh, Excuse examples. me, teacher. Yeah. Teacher. Yes, please. Is Sicilian yeah. poison as, is Sicilian poison harmful to people? And uh, now, uh, well, what I said about poisoning, that some of these poisons these organisms produce, uh, one, are for defense, okay? Uh, however, they could be poisonous to those that feed on them, but uh, you know, poison depends on the concentration, yeah? So it could do, not, I don't know, I'm not sure if it is so poisonous, maybe to some extent it can be poisonous in case they produce, they produce the poison but not maybe so much. They're not a big, a big threat like uh, the, the snakes would be, yeah? They may not be, none, they may have a poison that may not attack, be danger, dangerous to humans maybe, but could be dangerous to other organisms around. They are, they are within their vicinity, the smaller organisms, okay? Uh, like I said, maybe it could be, that could be the case. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, this brings me to uh, class reptilia, and the, we want to look at some examples like we have here. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, you have come across across them. Uh, they could you could be it could be common in our lives. Okay. Okay, I have some there. Um, 
we have, I think because of network, they are not yet clear to us, but I think one common one, you can see the a tortoise, you can see uh, the lizards, the snakes, uh, the, the alligator, and then the the, the, the excuse me teacher yes i'm asking a Crocodile. question like we see many things and they call them alligators like i'm asking what is an alligator because i'm confused they call the crocodiles alligators now uh, an alligator looks like a, a crocodile but the difference is in their snout uh, the snout shows a difference. Uh, the snout of an alligator is uh, always shorter, okay, and uh, does not come out widely, like uh, so. It is smaller. Yeah, so one alligators are smaller in size, and they have a shorter snout. The snout, that front mouth part, is smaller, okay, and. Uh, is almost really equal in his size, uh, which is not the case with the, uh, the, the, the crocodile, which he has um, a very longer, which has a, a very longer snout, okay? And the, if you look at the jaws, they're not of the same size. They have a larger size and then a kind of smaller size. So they would look like uh, the alligators are just like the, the small, the small, just a small difference between them and then and then the croc and then the crocodile for that case, yeah. Uh, let's let's go back to our work and then we we'll look at uh, these organisms from there. Okay. So uh, there you see the common examples of, of uh, reptiles, the lizard, crocodile, you can see the pointed snout uh, of a, a crocodile, which I've been talking about. It was an alligator, then it would be a smaller one. So about the network. Uh, then, hope you can be able to hear me. You have the python representing the snakes, then the, the tortoise. Tortoise, she exists there. Okay, can someone take us through the literature about this before we start talking about reptiles? Someone should take us through uh, that literature on reptiles. Which I can. Yes. Okay, please. Most do. reptiles live on land. They have tough dry scales on their bodies, which prevent loss of water and are for protection. They use lungs for gas exchange, like fish and amphibians, reptiles, and ectotherms. Reptiles right. reproduce by laying eggs that have soft shells. Okay, thank you very much uh, uh, for that. Uh, the small literature there uh, helps us to understand the reptiles and uh, also helps us to recall what we talked about them. Uh, like I've titled you before, life began in water and so data organism moved away from water on land. Now, what made uh, uh, reptiles to survive entire on land is their ability to develop to develop what to develop uh, scales all over their body for to protect them against water loss. The amphibians failed only this. Although they got the lungs like the, the reptiles, they didn't uh, manage that. Then it too, the egg of a reptile is shared although the shell is a little weaker but that is the starting point of protection 
and being able to live on land so they can live entirely on land without going back in water. The amphibians cannot do that. For the amphibians, they have to go back to water. These ones have conquered the land and the entire live on land. Although some of them still go back to water, like a crocodile will go back to water because that is where it can feed from. Okay, it is a very good hunter while in in water. It will get food while in water and even to cool down, given their body size. Yeah, uh, they would go back in water just to to cool down in most cases, but they can come back on and live. They can come back on land. They are land organisms. In water, they go there to feed, and then they can come back. It's not that they are supposed to be there. No, they are land. They live can live on land very comfortably, but normally near water bodies because of their size. Sometimes they need to get back in water and cool down. Okay, even some snakes we find them uh, doing the same, going back to water. But they are really comfortable living on land. They have developed uh, structures to enable them to survive on land. And like. <laughs> Now. Teacher. <laughs> Teacher. 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 Teacher has gone. Hello. Stop. 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 Hello. His weight, his network is poor. Job no Members, the teacher is back. Stop what you're doing. Because the teacher is back. Stop what you're doing. Look at my cyborgs. Where is he? I'll stop with me.
Papi, how are you, Papi? Joero. Joero, how are you? Joero. Papi. 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 Remember, stop shouting. Hey, hey, hi. Yo. Remember, which person is called person? I would do. <laughs> I would do. Go stop shouting. Go stop putting all the names that are known to you. Well, one in a eight as Magog form one. Okay. Uh, hello. Hello. We are there. Oh, sorry, sorry there. for so sorry for that interruption, but. Ah, we should get back to what we are looking at. Okay, sorry for for that. Uh, the network has some big problem for now. However, we are looking at these uh, reptiles. Uh, we had looked at the uh, the literature about them. Yeah, I was. Uh, talking about them being ectotherms and then how they produce by laying eggs and they have, have seen the reason why the eggs must be what? Must have a share for survival on what? For survival on land. Okay. Uh, so they are, their life is a little bit similar to the one. Hello? Hello? Yeah, okay. Sorry for that. Uh, so uh, if we, I don't know if there is any question that uh, arises out of these uh, amphibian 
Uh, has any of you been to Uganda Reptile Village? In Entebbe? Yes. Hello? Yeah, I hope you, Hello, yeah, if you, yeah. If you have gone to Uganda Reptile Village, uh, you could uh, have seen quite a number of those reptiles uh, being kept there. And the, uh, even in the, in the zoo, there is a, a section for reptiles where you can be taken through a number of uh, reptiles and their life, okay? And if you get to learn them, realize they are also very friendly organisms that you can live with, including snakes, yeah? Because I think people there live with snakes and people train to live with snakes as long as you understand them. Okay, you understand what they want and they don't what they don't want. Yeah, uh, the moment if you live with if you are going to live with snakes, then you have to understand them. Okay, and you have to be very careful with them. You must uh, if you go to their room where they stay, uh, you you must have one. Should I have a question? Have, yes. You can ask. You may ask, please. Oh, teacher. The person, yes. Talking about the the geckos, teacher, are very poisonous. The geckos, the geckos are very poisonous. And now you see, you see kind of yeah. reptiles one, they are known to have some form of poison, okay? Uh, which one they use for their defense, like I've told you. Uh, however, uh, I'm not sure uh, whether they, they really produce a, such a poison that is very dangerous, yeah? Uh, but of course, their appearance itself, the way they look like, is enough to scare humans away. The way they look, they look, the way they appear. Then, of course, a, like most organs have told you, they have a bit to produce a poison or even to kill. Can you believe a hen can kill human? Yeah? Hello? Can you believe a oh, hen no. can kill? Oh, a, the child, no. Yes, I believe. Yes, so you should you should you should do you should know, okay. Many organisms they have ways of defending themselves in a particular way. So you may think uh, something is not poisonous when it really is. If attacked, uh, so it's about defense, okay. Even a hen can attack and kill, okay. Teacher, in most cases, yes, please. Teacher, I'm wondering, some Chinese yeah. eat, eat these reptiles as food, but I heard that yeah. when it falls in your food, when you eat mm. it, you die. Now, uh, if Chinese eat oh. snakes or, or reptiles... Teacher! Uh, yes, please, understand me. Hello? Yeah. Uh, can you listen? Teacher! Uh, like if, yes, please. Teacher. Yes, please ask your question now. I'm listening. But, but then, for us, when we eat it, when it falls in our food, then you eat it, you die. Okay, now. Yeah. Uh, okay, you, you can mute eh, and listen. Uh, I, I was still <laughs> answering you, okay? You, you look at that snake, <laughs> yeah? <laughs> Uh, if you look at that snake, oh, it can be, okay. it, uh, if mm. that snake is poisonous, eh? but uh, if you Shall we are not hearing? know how to, uh, oh, sorry, hello, then, hello. Shall we are not hearing? I don't know. Maybe you have a problem. Is it the same for everyone? Hello? Yeah. So I was saying, eh, 
uh, these people eat the snakes. One, not the, the poison is not every time within the snake. There is a particular part of the body that produces the, the poison in these snakes, for example. And until a snake has been disturbed, uh, that's when it can uh, produce that poison. Actually, if you, if you find it in its normal situation, okay, uh, it doesn't have poison. But if it is going to attack, that's when it is going to produce poison. Or if you find it in dead, maybe someone disturbed it, it can produce poison all over its body. And uh, even in the bones of the snake after it has died, or it's fresh after it has died, it can be poisonous. But uh, no matter what these people do, the Chinese who eat them, okay, there is a way they, they cut off those parts where the poisons are. Okay, because a snake is poisonous, but a snake has the same snake which is poisonous has what we call the antidote. That's why in hospitals they they keep these these snakes and then get uh, what we call the antivenom. Yeah, so they have the, the venom, which is the poison in the snake, but with the same snake that has venom, it also has what we call anti anti venom. Okay. That's why the venom they have does not have an effect on them. So if you get a snake bite, uh, normally it is the antivenom that they can use to treat you uh, from that uh, snake what? Snake bite. Uh, so meaning that when it's going to eat them, they remove, first of all, the head and the tail part has to be removed. After removing the tail, after removing the tail and the head part, the snake becomes a good food. Uh, it becomes good. Uh, it becomes good. Uh, it becomes good food at uh, that time uh, when it has not been disturbed. But the moment you disturb it, then the poison has, the poison can spread all over its flesh, and then it becomes very dangerous. Okay, it can spread that poison. Uh, and even when you have just killed the snake, by the way. Uh, it remains poisonous. Yeah, so don't get a snake uh, when it has just been killed and think you can touch it. You know, it remains very poisonous, and some of them can even transmit their poison through their their skin if they have just been killed and fresh. Some even the bones they remain poisonous after they've been killed. So you have to be very careful with such what snakes. Then now somebody is saying me something. If you like lizards fall into the food, they become poisonous. Not all of them. That's one. Maybe a particular one. Yeah, there's a particular one which can be very dangerous and very poisonous all over. If it just even walks over you or walks over the food you're going to eat or falls in the water and you drink it, it would be it would be a particular species that is there. Like I can tell you that uh, there are some plants which are poisonous, even touching them. In the forest of Amazon, there is a plant that is poisonous by touching it. Yeah? Even I think it is in Uganda, there's a poisonous tree. Yeah? If you touch it, it, the sap from that tree is very poisonous. Can you go near that tree, find many organisms you have died around it. Yeah? So, it happens with many organisms as a way of defending or ways of getting nitrogen. You have heard about those plants that will like capture insects. Yeah. So that is a form of defense in most organisms by producing what poison. So I think I've talked about the poison in snakes and how they are the, the, some people are experts of eating those things because they know their biology and they know how to handle them. So don't just find a snake killed and the person eat it, you know, it must be a living snake, they leave them, settle, and then, then they can come, grab them, chop off the head and the tail very fast, and then become, even that hen, the chicken eat, if sometimes can make it see, meat very poisonous, if maybe you handle it in a funny way. That's why if you're going to kill it or slaughter it, whatever you do, you really have to target it and do it very fast. So else it has capacity to poison all its meat and even it can get problems. That is if you harass it before you kill it. So you know how they handle animals, all animals. If you're going to kill it, you really have to do it very fast, okay? Before it can 
cause the problems with the meat or with the flesh. Okay? Yeah. I, uh, hello, can you be able someone is telling me that I want about here? Hello? We okay. Hello. Hello. Okay, uh, that one would bring me to to the end of this uh, lesson where we have talked about to uh, amphibians yes. and then we've talked about amphibians and the reptiles. Hope you have been able to hear a lot of things I've talked about. Uh, we've been looking at examples of those organisms, the reptiles and amphibians, uh, characteristics, okay, and a lot of biology about them. Yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. I was not around, but I want to ask how. Yeah.